Hello, Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss about pharmacology of cephalosporins. In our previous video, we had discussed about pharmacology of penicillins. So now we are going to discuss about pharmacology of cephalosporins. These are the beta lactam antibiotics, which are bactericidal in nature. Bactericidal means they can kill or destroy the bacterium completely. Actually, cephalosporins are closely related structurally and functionally to the penicillins. Instead of six, six amino penicillinic acids, cephalosporins have seven amino cephalosporinic acid. This is a structural feature. They are produced semi-synthetically by the chemical attachment of side chain to seven amino cephalosporinic acid. Cephalosporins have the same mechanism of action as penicillin does. Here you can see the basic structural feature of 7 amino cephalosporinic acid and 6 amino penicillinic acid. When we talk about penicillins, this penicillin has 6 amino penicillinic acid. This is the four member ring, this one, 6 and 7, and carbonyl carbon, carbonyl oxygen. This is called beta lactam, and beta -lactam ring, which is the necessary ring for antibacterial activity. This structure was the basic or general structure of the penicillin while 7 amino cephalosporinic acid is the basic ring structure of cephalosporins. Here is the beta lactam ring which we are talking about the beta lactam antibiotic and instead of 5 membered thio group we are having the 6 membered ring here. So these are the basic structural feature of penicillins and cephalosporins. Hope you can remember it. So in cephalosporins you should have remembered this. The structural entity was is 7 amino cephalosporinic acid. Now we are doing the classification of cephalosporins, the general classification of the cephalosporins. You can pause video here. Let me pause here. It is actually has four generations. The first generation, second generation, third generation and fourth generation. These generations are on the basis of the applicability or the spectra of the antibiotics which included or you can say which have the more advantages over the previous generations so till now we are having on usage basis like we are having first generation cephalosporin cephalexin etc second generation cephalochlor cephoxetine third generation is most important as it covered most of the microorganisms so we can use them in variety of the infections and in hospitals or in uh, many fields these antibiotics are used like ceftriaxone, ceftazidine, cefexime cef uh, and uh, what we can say cefparazone also and four generation cephalosporin can in include cefepime so this is a general classification you can find many uh, many other drugs in updated classification on any book Now we are going to discuss about mechanism of action of cephalosporins. Again, we are having this structure. Let me pause video here. Now you can see here a general or you can say a normal bacterium cell wall. Cell wall is composed of peptidoglycan. Here is a cell wall unit. These are the, and here is a cross linking cross-linking is necessary in order to maintain the integrity of the cell now like you can see they are present in straight line integrity means they the cross-linking provide a strength to the bacterium cell wall so how this cross-linking takes place there is enzyme in bacterium known as transpeptidase these enzyme catalyze the formation of the cross-linking of one peptidoglycan layer to other and in this way they are causing strengthening or maintaining the integrity of the cell wall so bacterium can survive in any situation but when we discuss when we give cephalosporins any of the cephalosporins they inhibit the transpeptidase enzyme transpeptidase enzyme as we discussed that this causes cross-linking of one 
peptidoglycan layer to the others so when transpeptide is inhibited by cephalosporins there is no cross linking takes place like you can see here there is no cross linking so in a result or in a consequence there is no cross link and the integrity of the cell wall and the strength of the cell wall is completely lost and lysis of the cell wall occurs i hope this makes sense to you people so let me explain uh, again cephalosporins work on the same pattern as penicillin does normal function of penicillin binding proteins these are pbp or the bacterial enzymes which are responsible for synthesis of the cell wall and also involved in the cross linkages between peptidoglycan layer as i have discussed earlier so cephalosporins cephalosporins when given they inhibit synthesis of cell wall by binding to these penicillin binding protein the same cephalosporin inhibit that this transpeptide is catalyzed reaction as i discussed earlier therefore preventing the formation of the cross link essential for cell wall integrity most gram positive bacteria such as cocci produces autolysins which is a degradative enzyme this enzyme autolysin normally participate in the remodeling of the bacterial cell wall so in the presence of the cephalosporins any other drug the degradative action of the autolysin pro proceeds in the absence of the cell wall synthesis therefore antibacterial effect of the cephalosporin is a result of both inhibition of cell wall synthesis and destruction of the existing cell wall by autolysins let me explain again actually as i have discussed earlier that a transpeptide is causing cross linking of peptidoglycan layer and gram positive bacteria such as cocci produces autolysin this enzyme is normally present for remodeling of the bacterial cell wall so when cephalosporin given they disrupt the cell wall synthesis like we have discussed in previous step the transpeptide is okay so there is no cross linkage so there will be no strengthening or there is no integrity of the cell wall and again after that autolysin is producing is normally in bacterium cell so that means the cell wall synthesis or the cell wall remodeling takes place which cephalosporin degradative action proceed in the absence of the cell wall synthesis so this is important thing you have to remember this then we have uses or indications of cephalosporins which is important it is obviously as alternate to penicillin for ant ant upper respiratory tract infections and cutaneous infections respiratory urinary and soft tissue infections caused by gram negative organisms penicillin is producing staphylococcus infection septicemia caused by the gram negative organisms and surgical prophylaxis meningitis gonorrhea caused by the penicillin is producing organisms typhoid hospital acquired infections or the uses of these cephalosporins so then we have adverse drug reactions obviously as penicillin does hypersensitivity to cephalosporin is also this issue hypersensitivity reaction diarrhea is common nephrotic syndrome nephrotoxicity is there neurotoxicity is there neutropenia thrombocytopenia bleeding disorders are the common things now we are discussing about mechanism of resistance of cephalosporins obviously there are many mechanisms like the first one is alteration of <coughs> alteration of the sorry penicillin binding proteins penicillin binding proteins let me pause the video here i hope you still remember penicillin binding proteins are the channels on which the antibiotics 
actually attached or bind in order to initiate its action so so alteration of the penicillin binding proteins leads to decreased binding of the beta lactam antibiotic now i hope you people can get the basic concept if the receptor or if the shape of the surface channel is changed so there is a possibility that no antibiotic can attach to them like cephalosporin so in this way alteration of the penicillin binding proteins or pbp decreases the binding of the beta lactam cephalosporin so less antibiotic that means the less action then we have production of the beta lactamase which enzymatically destroys the beta lactam ring therefore it inactivates cephalosporins hope you remember these things so here is the beta lactam ring so in bacterium the second mechanism of resistance was producing of beta lactamase enzyme this beta lactamase enzyme disrupts or destroys this ring or what is the result of destroying this ring so when we discuss about the structure activity relationship this beta lactam ring is responsible for the antibacterial activity so when there is no beta lactam ring so this antibiotic is nothing to do with anything you hope this makes sense then we have resistance can be transmitted to different species or different you can say organisms via plasmids that means it can be transferable then we have alteration in the membrane alteration in the membrane channels membrane channels are called porins which are responsible for resistance normally the normal function of the porins the normal function of these membrane channels through which antibiotics influx occur so change in these channels so change in these porins may lead to inhibit or decrease in flux of antibiotics particularly cephalosporins then we have a flux mechanism obviously we know this basic thing then we are having pharmacokinetics all cephalosporins excreted generally excreted via renal route except cephalosporin which is 50% hepatic clearance so in this you can say cephalosporin is somehow saved for patients having any renal compromise or renal impairment third generation have good cns penetration so effective against bacterial meningitis as well hope this makes sense you people thank you for watching this video i hope you have basic concept of spectra and as well as resistance mechanism and mechanism of action of cephalosporins keep subscribing our channel and keep visiting we will be making more video in future thank you very much i am akinasim signing off allah peace